Welcome back. Today we're going to chat about fractional utilization. And last time we talked about heart rate reserve. And if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you tune into that before coming to this one. In that last video, we talked about a 50% effort and we compared that effort between a large older athlete and a small younger athlete, trying to equalize it with this concept of heart rate reserve. And then we also talked about a 75% effort for the same athlete looking at contrasting a 75% bike effort with a 75% run effort. Now there's other ways to look at percentages, uh, percentages of max, percentage of utilization. I'm gonna introduce one to you today, fractional utilization of velocity at VO2 max, VVO2, uh, basically your speed when you're maxed out. Now it is possible to go faster than that speed uh, if we were sprinting. Uh, and this duration, this VO2 max velocity duration is about six minutes. And we get into that when we talk about the six minute test in the red zone section of endurance essentials. You'll find that in the run section. And I got a chapter, a run chapter coming as well where I'm gonna pull that in for you. Uh, when we pull all those articles together, make it easier for you to really understand our philosophy with run training. So over there is what I call a full profile. It's stepping up at a kilometer per hour and it's five minute steps. And I recommend even if you don't have access to lactate testing, I recommend you do this sort of test uh, so you can understand your heart rates and your feeling, so marks out of five, at each of these speeds. And it'll really help you dial in your zones, and it's going to give you information that can be used to calculate these breakpoints. And the breakpoints in this baseline goes up to 12 kilometers per hour. So the first breakpoint, that first threshold, happens there at 12 because lactate pops up after that. The second threshold is, I know for myself, I'm not gonna last longer than two steps once I cross that uh, threshold. So it's between 15 and 16 for me, and I've estimated that at 15.6. It would be your hour of power velocity. Uh, so you can also look at your race data and back that out as well. And then the final step, uh, 17 kilometers per hour, is what we're gonna use as the estimate of velocity at VO2 max for this. If you want to be more accurate, you can do the six minute test. And if you're an elite, you'll probably be able to go longer than six minutes. And John Hellemans talks about up to a 3K test, depending on the athlete profile. You can read about that in the section on the six minute test. So with that data, we wanna look at the percentage, what the breakpoints are as a percentage of this velocity at VO2 max. So first threshold is at about 70%, second threshold at about 90%, and VVO2 is 100%. Now, a month later from this full profile, I did a LT1 test, 10 minute steps, same step height, and I just wanted to see where the baseline, how far it got. Now on that test, I got to 13, uh, which would be 77%. So somewhere between 70 and 77%. So that's round numbers. Let's call it 75%. Somewhere in that range is going to be my first threshold. So you can't get precision with these. If we test you on different days, in different temperatures, even in different relative humidities, things will change a little bit. And what we're trying to do is build a data set over time to understand our individual athletic profile. And with that individual profile, we ask the question, well, what's my training mix look like? And am I missing out on something? Is there a, is there a way for me to adjust my training mix to maybe address my individual needs uh, more uh, specifically? and get better results. So let's pull these out of the way and move on to that question. So my friend Alan Cousins has a book that he's writing online on Substack. And the Substack is alancousins.substack.com. And in chapter seven, 
he actually goes to the trouble to lay this out for us. And it's called Athletic Foundations. And this is table 7.6 from that. And this is breakpoint norms for each level. And this is an interesting concept because volume is very important in developing these breakpoints. And what the question you want to ask yourself is, are my breakpoints in line with my athlete level? And I recommend the chapter to you. So let's just have a look at me. I think we were 75% and 90%. So that has me breaking at kind of the elite professional level. Now, I promise you, my VVO2 and my VO2 max watts are nothing like an elite or a professional. These are just my breakpoints. Uh, so relatively speaking, I'm aerobically well-developed. So one might think, well, hey, uh, you got to get out there and do some red zone or raise the roof. Not so fast. One of the things that I know about my physiology is I can shift that entire curve to the right if I focus on endurance and strength training. But the benefit to me is it lets me know that it's okay. It's okay to start doing a little bit of harder training uh, in my program because I'm relatively developed in an aerobic sense. Now, word of warning, five minute steps in that full profile, 10 minute steps in that LT1 submax profile, something that's not captured when you use lab tests for these calculations is what I call four dimensional performance, duration, durability, the impact of time. As a relatively low volume athlete, I know my durability is a weakness. If we wheel me out after two or three hours of exercise, say off the bike in a 70.3 race, my performance might not necessarily reflect those, those lab values. We're gonna get into that in a future episode when we talk about using these concepts to analyze our race results relative to our training performance. Another thing, multi-sport athletes, there's a medium of movement. And what I mean by that is water, fast moving air, and slow moving air. So once we understand our profiles, swim, bike, and run, we can start putting together a race strategy for where it makes sense to spend our energy. We're going to get into that next time, and I hope you join me. Thanks for listening.